Alright, stage 3 characteristics of well, a well engineered software product. It's maintainable. It is secure. It is portable. Yeah, portable, maintainable, secure. Yeah, something like that. Um, what was I say? Yeah, I'm in the video. Be up for about a week. There about. A week or two. Explaining waterfall approaches to some development. Okay, so waterfall is a step by step that um, achieves deliverables for the software product. For the software product and you cannot move on to another step if the previous step is not accomplished i don't know what else they want like do they want you to list all the steps in water for the waterfall model or they wanted to explain the waterfall approach i am um, i doubt they wanted to actually list all the steps in waterfall because it's three marks they wanted to they wanted to show that you understand what waterfalls um pros and cons are sort of something like that yeah i would contend that that is what they want but if you have the study steps of the waterfall model and you put plan and analyze, design, implement, code, review, and all that stuff, yeah, yeah. So, so chances are it's late in the night and you're watching this past paper video, hoping that you get the answers to the past paper that you've been looking for for all this time, and you're happy that it actually exists on YouTube. Well, go leave it up to the YouTube algorithm to show you the rest of um, answers. I have an app. That's called Learn It by Make It Simple TT and it has all the past paper answers in chronological order for the past 10 years, maybe 12, depending on the time that you're watching this video, it might have a lot more. The app is called Learn It, go find it, download it, link will be in the description. And if you want to see the PDF with the actual crap of foot handwriting that I have with the answers, so you could actually scroll through the PDF and look at the answers as it was written, instead of watching the video, hey, you could do that too. Download the app now. Alright, back to the answers. Oh, here comes uh, ERD, our arch nemesis. All right, ERD, I see you, we see you. In a hospital, patients are assigned to one ward where they are treated by one doctor. All right, I won't have to draw this out as I read it or wait till I reach to the end. Sometimes it'd be nicer to just draw it out as you read it because when you reach to the end, you get vexed. But then sometimes you need to read the whole question. All right, I'll read the whole question. In a hospital, patients are assigned to one ward where they are treated by one doctor. A ward may have one or more doctors and a doctor can work in one or more wards. There are a number of nurses who work on each ward and each one may take care of one or more patients on that ward. A patient. Alright, this is they clearly guiding you down onto what you should see. So let's, let's do A hospital, patients are assigned to one ward. So we know that there are patients and assigned to the patients assigned to one ward. But they have patients, so let's put many patients. Many patients are assigned to one ward. Right, so we'll put that uh, as one ward there. So we'll put the one ward, we we'll put the slash to, to, to simulate the one ward, right? Because this is how comes high paper, so the ERD diagram had to be like, you know, on point, on point. Alright, so I'll be trying to select the one ward, um, where they are treated by one doctor. So a patient is treated by patient treated by one doctor the patient is treated by one doctor how many patients 
a patient, patients are assigned to one or so many patients are treated by, by one doctor. Yeah, that makes sense, right? Good. A ward may have one or more doctors and a doctor can work one or more wards. So a ward may have a ward, a ward may have one or more doctors. So we put in the one or many. Ward may have one or more doctors. And what they said, a ward may have one or more doctors and a doctor can work on one or more doctors. Right, doctor works on one or more wards, right. There are a number of nurses who work each ward and each one may take care of one or more patients. This is... See this stuff, when you start drawing this diagram like this and you had to move the whole diagram, like I lucky I could do this, right? I could see like this whole thing and let's drag it down. But what if you were drawing this on the top left hand side of your page, you would have run out of space. But you could probably figure it out, anyhow. Alright, so let's go. A, there are a number of nurses who work on each ward and each one take care of one or more patients. So we have nurses. Oh, I forget, you can't put plurals in our ERD diagram, so you have to put like patient, ward, doctor, nurse right here. Don't put S. If you put S, you'll lose that mark. Alright, so a uh, number of nurses who work on each ward. A uh, nurse works. So many nurses works on work on one ward. Many nurses work on one ward. There are a number of nurses who work on each ward and each one may take care of one or more patients. So one nurse takes care of one or more patients. So I put any one or more there. On that ward. A patient can also be taken care of by one or more of the nurses. Okay. So we put in one or more here also. Right. Each patient has a unique patient ID. Alright, so we'll give you an ID that you have to put in an oval. Um, their primary key is a primary key, so that means you have to underline it. The hospital keeps track of the name of each patient. So we have to put the name. And has a record of his or her address and emergency contact number. Address and the phone number. All of these things are attributes of a patient. Uh, um, each patient is ad administered to one or more one or more treatments to deal with his own specific condition. So now we gotta get treatment. Wow. That way, now okay. Treatment. What is the verb administered? That diamond real shaky, but anyhow. Right, so each patient is administered. Each patient has had one or more treatments. So treatments is one or more. And to deal with it all specific thing. So each patient, one patient is uh, yeah. Alright, I think we covered everything there. This had to be for oh is that nine marks. I thought it was ten. Yeah, this this ERD diagram is fairly large for what they normally ask. But it wasn't that hard because you just have to read the question along with how they ask it. That's usually how they work. Alright, the string is between functional requirements and non-functional. <coughs> functional requirements are functional the things or processes that the system should be able to do when completed. Example display records. Non functional the <clears throat> constraints that the system may have. The <clears throat> or the what's called thing by or the um, unseen deliverables deliverables needed. Example 
fast runtime. Something like that. Um, an example may save you if you write, if you just throw words on the paper like I just did. But it's too much. So yeah, if you throw words on the paper, more than likely some of the words I throw will, will get you there. Describe how computer edit software engineering tools are used to support software development. Ah, this this mash up some people in the IT exam this year. But come size students will be like, oh, case tools. Case tools make it easy to do some um, the repetitive tasks by automating them based inputs from the project. Example, creating DFDs from the functions in the code. Yes. Case tools make life a little easier. Um, next. The function num times returns the number of occurrences of an integer n in an array values. The function is defined as follows. It is send any integer values and integer n. So how much times you see that describe two tests that could be used to determine if the function is working correctly. All right. Easiest thing to do with a test is wrong data. So our wrong data test will be send a full array and an integer that does not exist. It should return not found. Then you could send correct data. Send a full array and an integer that does exist. It should return found. Ta da! All right. Um, all right, so that's the description of the two tests. Four marks, it's really easy. Usually, you do a wrong data, correct data, and missing data. When you send wrong data, you'll get not found. When you send missing data, you'll get not found or can't complete or something like that. Or current correct because of the answer. So anything should be good there. Yeah. Alright, this is um this is white box text testing because no, this is black box testing actually. Because you're actually just sending the values to the function, but you don't know how the function actually does it. You don't know if you're using a while loop or a for loop or anything like that. Alright, this here, I, I seed level 0 already, and I don't start to be like, ah, PTSD, PTSD. I really thought that CXC was just like, capable just gonna be like, alright, cool. We're only gonna do context level and level 1. Context level and level one. Context level is without any data stores, just one process, and level one is multiple processes. But they come with this level zero thing again, which has had many teachers, many, many teachers on defense and you know, many like seminars and questions and all kind of thing went down because nobody knows what a level zero really now. But we assume that our level zero is a little bit after our context, which is basically a context level diagram with data stores. So let's see what this question holds. And um, I'm really gonna fight it too much because I fight this, I fight this battle too much already. Right, a customer sends an order to the order processing system. The system checks if the items ordered are in the inventory. If the items are available, <clears throat> a shipping notice is sent to the warehouse, which dispatches the items to the customer and updates the number of items in the inventory. If the items are not available, the order is rejected and returned to the customer. So it's a contact level diagram with a data store. Yeah. All right. So we have a customer sends an order to the order processing system. We will call you the order processing system. So this will be one order processing. 
Ta-da. The system checks if the items ordered are in the inventory. So they're going to check a data store called inventory. Uh, if the items are available, a shipping notice is sent to the URL. So this will be like status. It's available. If it's available, it sends a notice um, to the warehouse, which is an external entity. It dispatches the items to the customer and updates the number of items in the inventory. The warehouse dispatches the item to the customer and updates the number. So we have to call this dispatch. The warehouse will send all the item. The warehouse dispatches the item to the customer and updates the number of items in the inventory. So this will be item goes to customer. And dispatch is going to send dispatch updating the items. Yeah, it will send our item value to the inventory. So the dispatch is the process. Dispatch is the process. It processes the, it, the dispatches the item to the customer and updates the number of items in the inventory. If the items are not available, the order is rejected and returned to the customer. If it's not available, so this all shocks. Um, yeah. If it's not available, it will send a uh, rejection i think that sounds about correct how many marks for this seven marks yeah that look like about it there that look like seven markish when is the yeah, we see the level zero and they have detailed single decomposition i really don't know what they want to want to why would they say detailed single decomposition i don't know what probably it out there in some textbook that i've never seen before and i'll just Draw the draw it as if it's a level one diagram because a level one diagram as basically what the paragraph was talking about it. That takes us to the end of section two. Alright, making good time. I'm trying to finish this in an hour and right now on what 42 minutes. Mm -hmm.